All right, guys, so I successfully installed one front coil spring without chipping or scratching any paint, which is very surprising. And uh, anyway, uh, so now I got the other side to do. Kind of sucks. Not looking forward to it. And uh, I bolted my little transmission line bracket I made on. And uh, I went ahead and put that cover plate I made on there. Uh, even though I have to take it back off when I put the core support on so I can access the nuts on the bottom. But uh, it was just killing me. I had to see what it looked like with it on, you know. But it looks pretty nice. That way you don't see up in the chassis and stuff. And it was a good good use for an old script. Uh, the dash script isn't original, but it, it cleaned up really, really nice. Uh, let's see. I did my positive battery cable. Uh, for the most part, it's on. I still need to put a lug on this end, but I still got to get the starter on the car and see where that's going to go. But anyway, I've got the center, main center area is all mounted. Uh, I do have to take the some of it back loose, though, and pull it through. Uh, I've got to put some... Uh, if I can remember what I did with it here. i got such a mess in here. need to clean up. I've got... Uh, what I run into is I had a <clears throat> excuse me I had a Taylor trunk mount battery kit and I want to say it was like four gauge wire and this is zero that I ended up going with uh, so when I originally drilled the holes in this body mount I had grommets and everything that fit that cable and fit that hole in the frame perfectly uh, for it to pass through to keep it from chafing so when I went up in size on my battery cable it kind of messed me up here my grommets won't work now. Um, Anyway, the, there's a little bit of space around it, and so I've decided, I got this at Lowe's. Uh, this is a like a real heavy, kind of a stiff heat shrink stuff here. Uh, at least I'm assuming it's heat shrink. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut a piece and, and uh, put it on here, because this actually fits over the cable and goes through there. So that'll be my shafe resistance, because uh, this stuff is kind of thick. And I'm also going to put a little piece right here where it goes over the curve of this forward spring hanger just to keep that from shaving. Now this cable, the shielding is very thick on this. Uh, so, I mean, I doubt I ever have any issues, but I, I always like to use grommets on, on wires going through stuff. But in this case, I, I just can't. So, anyway, got my rear fuel line on. Um, what else? Finally put some GL5 fluid in my uh, rear axle. Uh, I'm kind of glad I did it with the body off. Now I don't have to worry about climbing into the car and doing it on my back. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna, I got an early Christmas present yesterday. Check this out. Two Christmas presents, actually. Um, that is a reproduction of the original Bel Air steering wheel. And now this is the 16 inch from Mutton Hollow. This is not the 15 inch that everybody uh, seems to be using. Um, I, I don't have the. I'm using my original manual steering box, so uh, I kind of wanted to use the factory steering wheel, but it's just a little too big. Uh, so that I'm glad they make that in a 16. That was pretty cool. Uh, now I originally was going to go with this. Uh, this is a Moon, and I bought this new. Uh, this is a 15 inch because uh, I have speed holes all in the car. And uh, I like that it was chrome in the center because the dash on these cars have a lot of chrome. But it just, it really doesn't kind of fit the build because I've got the big, you know, wheels and it's lowered, and, you know, black center wheels and everything. This is more of a vintage steering wheel, obviously. And now I've had quite a few of these in the past. And uh, this is one thing that I always thought was kind of cool that I did. I did this on a 56 some years back and I always thought it was cool. Uh, I got the the bullet style horn button for the moon wheel, and uh, anyway, it has the same curvature pretty much as the factory uh, steering wheel center. Uh, so you can buy your you know reproduction emblem for your steering wheel for your Bel Air or your 150 or 210, and, and put it on there. Uh, just got to drill two holes in it, you know, and pretty much it would mount the same as an original. Uh, so I always thought that was kind of cool, and that's what I plan on doing here. But now, instead of putting this emblem on here, now I can put it on my new reproduction steering wheel. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, that steering wheel 
it's pre-painted black, uh, which was kind of nice. I wasn't going to have to do anything to it other than bolt it on. Uh, but I run into an issue. Now, I do have a stock steering wheel here in the house, but it has a lot of cracks in it. So I was going to have to do a lot of uh, work on it. And uh, that is one thing that I don't like doing is repairing the old steering wheels. I've done quite a few in the past. It's just time consuming. Got to be real detail oriented for that. But, uh, you know. Anyway, this steering wheel, uh, if you can see that, the holes don't quite line up right um, for the insulators that go in there. This, this uh, horn ring needs to come down a little bit and uh, it's just not going down all the way where it needs to. Now if I put this horn ring on my original steering wheel, the holes line up perfectly. Uh, so it is the steering wheel that is the issue. Um, the, the issue that it's having is it's hitting right here uh, the two center spokes toward the center right here on this edge on both sides is where it's hitting uh, so this needs to be relieved a little bit with a grinder and uh, of course it'll have to be repainted after that so that kind of sucks uh, I might just go in there and try to touch it up or something because I don't know that it'll be that visible but it wouldn't be much to go ahead and just scotch bright it down and reshoot it but uh, it sure beats the heck out of fixing a bunch of cracks in my old one, so, and then still hit my belly every time I get in and out of it. Uh, so I, I'll take this all day long, but anyway, I'm pretty pretty excited. I do have an original center. I've got two of them around here somewhere, and uh, one of them is from a car that I had, and I'm pretty sure it's the very first 55 I ever drug in. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that center, I, one of those centers I have is from. Uh, so I'm going to use that one just because it was one of my first 55s from like 1992. So I'm going to I'm going to use that just for the nostalgia factor of it. But anyway, guys, I guess that's pretty much it. Just wanted to give a little update. Uh, they're just I haven't done much because you know I've been working for almost a whole month on customers' cars, and you know when I get home in the evenings, I'm I take a shower and I eat dinner and I'm done. I melt into the couch. And uh, uh, the other problem is a uh, new Call of Duty came out. Uh, so I've been playing that in the evenings with my friends. So <laughs> Some of you probably didn't know that, that I was a gamer nerd. Uh, and it's, it, it is kind of shocking to some people. Now, I only play Call of Duty. Uh, I have been playing with the same guys for about, I think, 12 years or something like that. 12, 13 years. And uh, I only play Call of Duty. I don't, I don't play any other games. Uh, I don't know why it just doesn't interest me. Like car games don't don't interest me. I just like the the first person shooter Call of Duty style. But anyway, I'm uh, I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get that cool spring put in there and quit procrastinating. It, it sucks, man. Got to be real careful. To keep from chipping and scratching that that paint on that stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure I got lucky on this side, but I don't know if I'm still going to. If I'm still lucky after that, I'm going to go get a lottery ticket.